I read a lot of Indian books. And if you want to know which are my favorite books that I read in the last year, then keep watching this video. Hi guys, I'm Manpreet and I make book related videos on this channel and in today's video, I'm going to tell you about my top 7 of 2017 Indian edition. Now there is one video which is already up in this series which I'm doing about my top 7 of 2017. It's the foreign edition, foreign fiction which I read. Go watch that video, it's linked up or in the description. And now I'm going to tell you about the books which I read in 2017 and I loved, I loved only Indian fiction okay before we get started make sure you are subscribed already check it again check it again and make sure your notifications are on and do follow me on my Instagram so that you can know what I'm reading and you know my instant thoughts about the book because you know it always keeps changing so if you want to know what she thinks about this book instantly follow me on my Instagram <laughs> These books are in no particular order and I will tell you what the book is about in like one or two lines and then try and I'm, I know I'll fail. Try to tell you why I love that book. I'll fail definitely but still. Some of you may remember that I did one video like this in the middle of 2017 as well. I'll link it up above as well and if I have reviewed any of these books I'll link in the description so keep an eye on the description. <laughs> Number one book is The Palace of Illusions by Chitra Banerjee Diva Karuni. It's a mythological fiction, a retelling of Mahabharat from Draupadi's perspective. The whole concept of retelling a male dominant epic in the voice of the most important female in the epic is fantastic and it has been done so nicely. The characters and you know Everybody gets curious about uh, Draupadi because she is such a main character in the whole epic Mahabharat even though you know everybody talks about the Pandas and Kauravs, Draupadi is actually really important character and now I get to listen to what she thinks, what she thinks about all the events that happen in her life, what happens to her and it's fantastic written so well it has been done so well it's a fantastic book guys if you haven't read it do read it right now while we are talking about the mythological fiction let's just finish all the mythological fictions that are in this list and there are actually three and the second one is Sita Warrior of Mithila by Amish now this is the second book in the Ram Chandra series by Amish Tripathi this is the retelling of Ramayan but as a Mishri Party writes, you can never read a book like thinking this it's the basic retelling because the story is completely different and it's completely fresh even when it's a loose retelling. It cannot be called retelling, I'm telling you, okay? Otherwise, you'll get confused while reading his books and then people keep asking me. I could not get into his books, but I really want to. The point is, do not think it's a retelling, okay? Stop comparing it to Ramayana. So there is this one book in the series, Sire of Ikshvaku. And honestly, these two can be read as standalones. You do not have to read Sign of Ikshvaku to be able to read this book, okay? So I would suggest you pick up this book because this has the main character, Sita. And you would never have imagined how interesting Sita can be. What a fierce warrior and what an amazing character Sita can be. And she is in this book. So it's fantastic like the imagination the writing the whole setup is awesome and i'm going to use these words quite a lot because there is no other way to explain why these books are my favorite guys i'm sorry i am sorry but yes if you have read sign of ikshwaku and you're like oh it's too pretty read this book if you haven't read sign of ikshwaku read this book if you haven't read any amitra party book read this book and the third awesome mythological fiction is Kalki by Kevin Missal. Now this is a story of the 10th avatar of Vishnu which is Kalki and I really loved this book. I loved the length of it. I loved reading it. The experience and the writing and the whole plot is fantastic. I'm eagerly waiting for the next book and it's awesome. It's awesome guys. Now the next read which is kind of very close to the genre I showed you before is The Rise of Srivagami by Anand Neela Kanten. I suppose it's a historical fiction. Don't take my word on it because nobody really discusses about genres much in India. They should like where does it fall? Is it a, I don't think it's a mythological fiction. Is it a historical fiction? It kind of is. I don't know but it is the prequel to Bahubali. 
Now, a fun thing, I have interviewed Mr. Anand Neela Kantan and it was awesome. And there was this reporter who was asking him about this book and that reporter was, you know, is the story same as the movie Bahubali? No, no, no. The story is not the same. It's a prequel. It is set before the Bahubali movie happened. It has a signature style of Anand Neela Kantan. It is so emotional, so nice, so gripping. And the plot, there are so many subplots. Guys, I love a thick book with an elaborate plot. Like it shows you that the author has put in a lot of effort into it. Like, oh my God, I love this book as well. I have reviewed it. And the review has gotten a lot of views. It makes me really happy. But yes, I'm eagerly waiting for the next book for this one as well. I would say that this one and the last book that I mentioned, I do have some issues with them. But that doesn't mean they are my less favorites. I love them already. I love them so much. You should definitely read them. They are entertaining. Like they give you good experience and that's all that matters. There are some things which you do not like, but they don't matter. The thing is, you still need to read these books, okay? Start shopping now. Moving away from the historical and mythological fiction, I have a contemporary fiction, which is The Buzz by Anuja Chauhan. Although you will not see the takes, but I have taken so many takes and tried to explain what exactly this book is about, but it is so tough. You know, if I have to just simply explain, it's about this guy who is in Air Force and he's also called Baz and why is he called Baz and then you see his entire life in this book and that is what this book is about but it is way more complex than that I really love this book so much it's like a feel-good book which makes you see those Air Force Indian Air Force characters you see the fighter jets you see you know the training part of it you also see the love interest part of it there is a war going on so much of stuff i think it's a cold war but the point is this book is really entertaining and it's emotional it's gripping and i read it in one sitting <laughs> that rhyme you know it's amazing guys if you haven't ever read anuja chohan anuja chohan books are funny entertaining must read get this one even though I did not read a lot of romance last year, but I did read one book that I really loved and that is The Boy Who Loved by Dojoy Tata. Now, it's about this guy named Raghu. He keeps thinking of ways of committing suicide and you need to find out why it is happening to him, how it is happening to him. And you follow Raghu in this book where he tells you about his life, his family and how he finds love, if he finds love. Now, this is not just a normal romance novel. It's written so well, the voice of Raghu, it's written in the form of Raghu's diary and awesome. It's written in an awesome manner. The voice of Raghu, the way he explains things and the way he comments on things, fantastic. Then there is so much of family drama which shows you the hypocrisy of Indian parents, this discrimination, lies, conspiracies, all that stuff in this book is fantastic it's so nice like this is again a book you just want to pick up and you would not be able to put it down until you finish reading this book because it's so good it's so good just like some of the other books i have reviewed this book as well and there is this one question which i want to answer somebody asked me on instagram about you know there is this one pace in this book does it get more interesting honestly the book has this gloomy feeling throughout itself it's about this guy who contemplates suicide. It has to be serious. And there is no, you know, entertaining part or there is no spike that comes in the book which makes you feel like, oh my God, it has gotten so interesting. The whole book is that gloomy. And the beauty is in that. I feel so. Because the whole book makes you heavy hearted and, you know, it makes you thoughtful about the real state of Indian society and how people really can be. That is what I loved about this book and I hope it answers your question but absolutely amazing you must read it and I know you also want to know whether I read the second book I read it and I liked it but I did not love it okay so it was not like a must to read for me the second book but this one do not skip it do not skip it and the last book that I read in 2017 and which went on to become my favorite is The White Tiger by Arvind Adija now this is the winner of the Man Booker Prize 2008 and it's an absolutely amazing book it's written 
by this person who becomes an entrepreneur but he comes from a very poor family he comes from a very underprivileged part of the society and he tells you his life story in this book he actually tells it in the form of a letter to a prime minister so in this book this guy is telling how he became what he is and you get to hear his entire life story while he is commenting on the indian landscape now guys surprisingly i feel like every person has an equal right to like or dislike a book but honestly i was surprised by how many people left it a negative review saying that you know it's just goes on one pace and there is nothing interesting that happens in this book well that is not the whole point of this book the book is a commentary on the indian society it has sarcasm in it it has you know it has some really good points it's fantastic it's one of the must read indian books guys you cannot skip it i loved it so 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 much yes guys these are the top 7 indian fiction that i read in 2017 three are mythological fiction one is historical fiction one is contemporary fiction one is romance and one is literary fiction I absolutely love all of these books. I will definitely recommend you guys to read any of these books or all of these books. If you're looking for Indian book recommendations, they are here. So, yes, 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 read them. If you ever end up reading them, discuss these books with me. Okay, discuss with me. I'm always on Instagram reading your comments, replying to your comments, doing live videos all the time. So, do follow me there or comment below if you have read any of these books and what you think about them. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope you have already checked out my previous video in this series top 7 of 2017 the foreign edition and make sure you are subscribed so that you can also check out the next video in this series which would be top non fiction. So this is Manpreet signing off. I'll be back with another video very soon.